3D Printy's got the real tips for you this week. Joel Telling put a little bit too much force onto an extruder nozzle, and unfortunately, another Revo bites the dust. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 139. Let's get into it. Hey all welcome back to the channel and if you're new here and you're having trouble getting your 3d printers running right we want to help you out you can reach out to us on all the social media slide into those dms that is the best place to reach us in fact twitter is often the best place to reach me directly because it's one of the few social medias that i actually monitor we are thinking about doing kind of like a live series where we have people come on and we can fix their printers live on stream. I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. I think it might be mildly difficult to moderate, but it, in theory, it sounds like fun. I just don't know how in practice it's going to work. But hey, we do want to help you get your printers running right. And if you don't mind, like and subscribe goes a long way. But first up this week, we've got 3D Printy. My buddy Joe, who we got to hang out with at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. Video coming soon, TM. We've got a lot of videos coming out for Rocky Mountain Rep Rap. In fact, the first one just came out this last Wednesday. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. And we're going to be doing Rocky Mountain Rep Rap videos Monday and Wednesday until they're done every single week so that you can see the awesome people that we got a chance to talk to and Stay tuned for the last video, especially if you were one of the awesome people that we didn't get a chance to talk to. But 3D Printy here is saying when your print bed is angry and no amount of isopropyl alcohol will do, plain liquid dish soap always pulls through. And I agree. When in doubt, just go wash it. I'm not a huge, like, fan of saying, use this brand, because, like, not everyone has access to it, but Dawn... Dish soap happens to be one of the best ones for removing grease and oil. Who knew? They use it as part of their marketing plan. But you want to make sure that you get one with as little scents and that kind of thing as possible. If it says that it moisturizes your hands, you don't want that. You want the one that's going to strip all the oil and grease as much as humanly possible. will dry your skin out like crazy. And the original Dawn seems to do that quite well well and 3d printing is right here but sheldon the top commenter here says no amount of dish soap or iso works on those fuzzy plates smooth pei or bust though i have a satin plate i'm using on my xl since even where i can't possibly set the wrong z index things don't always stick to the textured plate and well there's been some opinions, right? We've got IPIND3D here, Ben. He's a Australian fan of ours. And unless your nozzle tip is absolutely clean, your Z offset on the XL can be wrong. And he's right. That's another talk for another day. I do happen to agree here. I'm not a huge fan of particularly the Prusa textured plates. I don't have a lot of luck with them. Even the satin plates have not been the best adhesion. I love Prusa's smooth plates, and I think they're some of the best smooth plates out there personally that are pure PEI. I don't know if I'm not preparing my textured plates correctly, or maybe they do need a bit of buffing and sanding like the smooth plates will after thousands of hours of printing. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just gotta wash it with soap and water every single time. But I've been using smooth plates for years and we wipe ours down with Windex in between prints, make sure it has ammonia in it and it could be any ammonia-based glass cleaner. It doesn't have to be the right brand. As long as you remove the hand oils from the way that you're touching things, right? Your greasy mitts are touching your build plate and that's a problem. As long as you're removing all of that, life will be good. The other thing to know, if your printers are sitting for a while, like when you go to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap and you come back four or five whatever days later, say you took a little extra time because Colorado is absolutely beautiful, which we did. And there will be tons of behind the scenes content, extra content that we film. And if you do want to enjoy that extra content, including 360 walkthroughs and 360s of almost all of the interviews that we did, you can join. Links are in that description below. PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel members, whatever works for you will make it easy for you to get that extra content that you do so thoroughly desire. But Joe here... He's right. It's a lesson that a lot of us learn that isopropyl alcohol is good for cleaning up crap, but it's not the best for removing oil. You might say, Grant, when I get alcohol on my hands, my hands dry out. Yes, it has some to do with it removing some of the oil, but way more to do with the fact of how it is incredibly volatile and is pulling away a lot of that natural stuff 
as it is evaporating. At least that's my understanding. And if your understanding is different, correct me in the comments, because like you all did last week with the tempered glass, thank you. By the way, there was like two or three of you that are like actual experts in glass that are like, actually, it can break on its own. And it's because of the stresses in the glass. It just comes to a head and pop goes the weasel. So thank you for those corrections. I love that we have an awesome community of people that are not only incredibly knowledgeable, but also incredibly knowledgeable about very specific things that honestly make it awesome for me to learn, unfortunately, the hard way, but a really awesome way to learn nonetheless. We got Joel Telling here who says, uh, well, sometimes you can get clogs in your next extruder nozzles because you tighten them too much. So this is from Plural Makes here. They are having some issues with their XL. We wanted to help out where we could, and I just loved this particular thing from Joel, saying, that's good, one of mine looked like this because I tightened it too much. I didn't know that one could do that such thing, but hey, I'm not Joel, and when you do put the full Joel on things, well, sometimes you're gonna squish it. So, next to nozzles are held in with a couple of screws, and they come in from the side to hold everything together. That keeps them from falling out, make sure they're tight in place, and everything like that. The bummer with the next router is, if you don't have it fully seated, it's gonna be a little bit loose when you tighten it down to here, rather than down to here. But you have to be careful, it's thin metal after all. So if you really do crank it down, it's going to clog up. I would say this wins the most unique nozzle clog that I've ever seen. Because while it's not technically at the nozzle, more specifically, it's at the heat break side of the next router. I don't know if I've ever seen a failure like that occur before. Have you guys seen it? Because I never have. And I think that's one of the more unique nozzle failures that we've seen. And certainly one that you could spend hours trying to track down and still never figure it out next up a submission from bear 3d tech a fan says hey 3d musketeers i'm having a bit of trouble with the design of mine i want it to be printable without supports however i am having this weird issue while printing it in theory it should be possible what would you change to improve printability hashtag print fix friday thanks for that we got a bamboo i'm hoping it's an a1 mini but honestly i'm not exactly certain how to determine the differences in the a1 and a1 mini from the side camera photo so uh bamboo peeps let me know if i'm wrong but we can see it looks okay and then it doesn't that's really the important part here and what's happening is we are printing really big parts on really really thin vertical sections and well, I was working on my mower that day. There's a whole story for this, and our Discord has been following along the whole time. The mower is working, for those that are wondering. But if you do need a small engine repair tech in Tampa Bay, hit me up, because I got a guy now. He's freaking awesome. But we can see we've got some tall spires, and they're going to definitely cause issues. Because thin parts will flex, no matter what they're made out of when printing. And because the filament itself is sticky, right? It's, it's not liquid it's sticky. It's like molasses. It will have a tendency to pull it back and forth, and eventually it can crack those off to the side, or they're going to wiggle a little bit, and it's not going to be as accurate as you would like. They want to do this with no support because, well, if you can, why not? But realistically, for a part like this, just a little bit of support would absolutely solve the problem. And we can see here that second layer printing actually has a really good idea that I didn't consider, and it's not one that I normally do personally. I said you could also play with the make overhangs printable setting. It will change the geometry to whatever angle you set the maximum as for as you slice it. Could also give you insight into what areas the printer is struggling with. And that is really fair. I do personally worry about that setting though, because it's going to obviously change the model itself. And I guess it's apparently not in Bamboo Studio, but you should be using Orca Slicer. There is no reason to use Bamboo Studio. Use Orca Slicer because you can turn on stealth mode and remove Bamboo's logging that you are automatically opted into by using Bamboo Studio. That one at least is plain text, but I don't like auto opting in for data collection. And besides, Orca Slicer is pretty much at the same level, and they do pull requests to get the features in. So what is your favorite slicer? And do you want to see slicer tips and tricks? Like, should we start like a short form style video series with her? Do you want a long form video series with tips and tricks for slicers or using slicers for beginners? 
let me know. But yeah, a little bit of Z-Hop will solve this problem if Z-Hop is not solving that problem. Yeah, you gotta have to add a little bit of support. He finally got it to print flawlessly. The latest version with a lower meeting did the trick. Thanks everyone for your help. Learned a lot from the thread. What he ended up doing is made more of a flat. Instead of it coming up to a point, add a little bit more of a flat there and it will do that bridging a little bit further down, which should hopefully make it a little bit happier. We can see what the final part looks like on top of what I'm fairly certain is a dice tower. Super cool part, by the way. And we can see the progress of pain that it takes to get there. 3D printing is not always about doing things perfectly the first time. Sometimes you'll have mistakes and learning from them is the most important thing. So thank you, Bear 3D Tech, not only for asking questions, but now we get to have others learn as well. And we get to crowdsource a solution because I would have never thought to do make overhangs printable. That's a great one to look at. And certainly the advice to just change the CAD model. If you're the one that's doing the CAD modeling, change the CAD model to make it more printable. A plus there. Great job, everybody. We have a fail from Discord member Sinzin, who, uh, well, I guess they can be happy about the fact that not only are Revos considerably more affordable now, but they also have a coupon if you do this, this is a sad day for this poor Revo nozzle. We can see really bad layer shift and, uh, well, turns out your stepper motors are stronger than you think. They're stronger than the heat break of this nozzle. And I said, well, hey, why don't you try to bend it back? Totally snapped it. The trick with the Revos. If you're going to have to order a new one anyways, you might as well try to fix it. It's not going to cost anything and you can learn. But you don't want to do it when it's cold. You've already stressed the metal. You want to get it warmed up. A pair of pliers might help out with this, although some thick gloves will also do the job just fine. But it is a very slight amount of pressure that it takes to move it back once everything is warm. Your printers aren't producing more than maybe... 5 to 10 kilos worth of force. Unless you're talking about some of the crazy builds that we saw from Rocky Mountain Rep Rap, where, yeah, they were using, like, hardcore servo motors and that kind of thing to run their machines stupid fast. But still, the average 3D printer is not going to have those issues. But you can run into where your Revo nozzle will bend. You could actually look at reducing your stepper motor current because there's really no reason that should happen. But I get it. If you want to run fast, you got to have high current. Uh, and unfortunately, well, things did break. Bit of a bummer there. But we can see that there is a 50% user error discount now offered through E3D. Terms and conditions apply. Standard warranty is unaffected. If you screw up by not screwing it in, we'll cover half your Revo nozzle replacement cost. That could be what potentially happened here, where it unscrewed ever so slightly, and that was enough for it to get caught and bend. But E3D is doing more than just the Revo. They have these bamboo high flow obsidians, which are super cool. And earlier this week, they released the fully assembled version, which does come at a slightly higher price, right? 25 pounds for it is a fair bit. But if you don't like assembling nozzles and don't know what you're doing, that one is factory assembled and you can trust it. I believe it also comes with all the extra accoutrement that the regular one doesn't. So that's going to be a heater, fan, thermistor, and it's all pre-applied at a factory. At least you have one less thing to worry about when you're making upgrades. For this particular user... If they wanted to go high flow right now, you're stuck at the 0.8, the 0.4, and the 0.6 are out of stock. Obviously, that will change with time. And then we see the regular Revo Obsidians. You've got all the way up to 0.8. But Revos are starting to get more affordable, and I'm happy to see that. And it is much easier to go with these starter packs and build systems for the Revo. I'd love to know your thoughts. I know that E3D Revo system is not the cheapest out there. In fact, it's quite expensive when you compare it to a lot of the other brands on the market. But E3D really does make high quality stuff and we've toured their facility. We will be releasing that video relatively soon. It is in editing currently. So if you do want to see our tour of E3 that we took right after Smurf when my hair looked absolutely crazy, get subscribed because that is coming through the pipes soon. And Prusa, which occurred before 
we shave my head. That'll be a fun one. It'll be weird to see me with long hair in videos again. But what isn't weird to see in videos, and I would love to add to that list, are all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts that we do here, links are down below. You can join for as little as $1 a month. And it goes to helping us make videos like this possible and trips like to Rocky Mountain possible as well, where we take, what, well over half a terabyte worth of footage in two days? It's pretty crazy. But that is all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Click the links below me. And as always, keep making awesome.